Hello and welcome to Clarity, a podcast series designed to create a safe space for conversations and reflections. I'm your host Janvi Gurja, a curious people observer, an executive coach and co-founder of Vital Signs Advisory. In today's episode, I'm in conversation with an exceptional guest, Mr. Shrida Venkat, Chief Executive Officer of the Akshay Patra Foundation. Join me as I explore Shrida, Shrida's journey of altruism through his life's learnings and his approach towards targeted transformation in the world's largest hunger feeding program. Today, we are at the cusp of the Akshay Patra Foundation completing 23 years, the vast majority of this saga under the able leadership of Shrida Venkat as he steers his troops of professionals and volunteers towards the vision of eliminating hunger for children so that they can choose education without the strife of childhood. Welcome to Clarity Shri. Thank you, Janvi. Thank you for having me on this podcast. In this space today, I would like to take a peek and delve into what makes you do what you do. So my first question to you is, you've always credited your parents as being very, very, you know, um, big catalysts in the way your personality has been formed, right? What are those two values that your parents have imprinted on you that you carry forward even today in your life? So Janavi, uh, I came from a middle class background, grew up in Nagpur. So if I were to tell two uh, qualities that I learned from my parents, one was uh, courage, mm -hmm. second was values. Okay. And never give up. Mm -hmm. So these are the things which I learned. And uh, I remember my mother telling me the courage should be such that even if you find a crawling snake, mm -hmm. you have the guts to stamp it. Mm -hmm. So not to uh, be afraid of things, move ahead in life, mm -hmm. be honest. Mm -hmm. So those kinds of values were instilled uh, at a young age in me. Okay. Uh, by parents. And how are you using it today? Do you have any anecdotes where you've used courage recently? So, you know, recently um, we had an issue. Uh, we had um, a kind of a crisis in Akshay Patra about mm -hmm. three years back. Mm -hmm. And of course, that's a separate story altogether. But Is this around uh, COVID? Come again? Around the COVID time? Around the COVID time. Okay. Around the COVID time. Mm -hmm. We had some changes in the leadership at the board level. And many felt that Akshay Patra will come on its knees. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is the end of Akshay Patra. So I think these values which my parents instilled and what I learned from my spiritual master, mm -hmm. uh, that you know, if you are doing anything with sincerity, with honesty, then the divine supports you. Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, what really helped was staying focused and my team rallied behind me. Mm -hmm. And uh, though the crisis was looming large, not a single team member left, left me owing to this uh, crisis. They all uh, stood And I also hear that at that point you did not lay off anyone, nor did you, you know, go into salary cuts or furloughs. So none of that happened. I also hear that. Yeah. So we yeah. were, uh, we as an organization are very compassionate. Mm -hmm. Compassion is at the core of what we do in Akshay Padra. You know, that's how Akshay Patra started. When, uh, you know, way back in mid 1970s, mm -hmm. uh, Swami Srila Prabhupada, he had built a temple in uh, Mayapur, a Krishna temple. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was uh, a big feast was given. Generally, when a temple is built, big feast mm -hmm. is given. And a huge feast was given on plankton leaf. Mm -hmm. And people had a sumptuous meal. And they were resting in their uh, respective places. Prabhupada was resting in his apartment. And he heard cries of children. Okay. And when he opened the apartment window, he saw street children fighting with stray dogs for leftover scrap of food. My so God. tears rolled down from his eyes. He said, today I have called the Supreme Father to this place. Mm -hmm. And wherever Father is there, his children should not go hungry. And he gave a mandate that in a 10 mile radius, no one should go hungry. The center which he builds, especially children. That was the visionary seed of Akshay Patra. And that is what binds all of us in Akshay Patra. And, and that is what attracted you when you transitioned from your corporate life into So, you know, into that's this? interesting. You know, um, 
I want to join the Indian Navy. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, after engineering, I got selected, uh, or the I was shortlisted for Indian Navy. I was supposed mm-hmm. to go for the final medical test, but I was the youngest at home. My mother didn't allow me to join. Mm-hmm. So the I, I remember very vividly the interviewer Commodore had mm-hmm. asked me a question. Is she there? Why you want to join Indian Navy? Mm-hmm. So I told him. You see, I told him in Hindi. Mm-hmm. I told him, sir, मरने के पहले कुछ करके जाना है. Fantastic. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. I told him I don't want to die just like that. Mm-hmm. I want to do something for this country, mm-hmm. and it so happened that my mother was not in favor of uh, joining. Then even I, uh, I love her a lot. She is no more, mm-hmm. and I abided by what she said. But now when I look back, probably Akshay Patra came into my life, mm-hmm. and there's an opportunity for me to do something. So I was in corporates like a typical engineer, management grad, wanting to become a CEO mm-hmm. by the age of forty. Uh, I used to volunteer with Akshay Patra. Okay. So when I was transitioning from one job to another. Mm-hmm. The chairman of Akshay Patra, mm. Swami Madhu Pandit Dasa, whom mm. I look up to, um, he is an IIT and a monk, mm. Mm. IIT Mumbai, a Padma Shri and a monk. Mm. He said uh, he called me to his room, and he said, uh, "She said, what are you doing?" So I told him I'm transitioning from one job to another. Mm-hmm. So he said, uh, "Why are you building empires for others? Why do you build for these children? Mm. Mm. These are God's children." So that was a moment of calling for me, and I transitioned. It just took me a minute. It's like you know the resonance, mm-hmm. uh, you know something and clicks. And just like that, yeah, just like it that, just took clicked. me a minute to say yes to him. So, so when you were getting off that hamster wheel of the corporate, okay, and coming into, while spirituality is something that you had embraced, but you were coming into a different system, a different way of working, right? What were some of those uh, behaviors or characteristics that you left behind in the corporate because you couldn't bring it into the Akshay Patra world? So, you know, uh, in Akshay Patra, I say Akshay Patra is an organization whose mind is of a corporate mm. yes. and heart of a compassionate not-for-profit. Mm. So, compassion is something uh, which I uh, which I embraced in Akshay Patra, uh-huh. and uh, you know the profit motive. or trying to maximize share maximize profit uh, which in in one sense is very prevalent in uh, corporate mm-hmm. i channelize that to maximize what we can serve to children so it is not that you leave behind a corporate uh, way of thinking mm-hmm. but you can channelize it for doing good you can so i'm going to just pick on that word compassion that you used uh, i'm coming off a fabulous week of a phen- phenomenal thinkers global conference and in which the word compassion was used as it is extremely critical today in today's world given the geopolitical tension given some of the questionable practices by the different countries and their leaders to be compassionate has become the order of the day and now i'm very curious reader to understand how did you while you at heart were compassionate how did you bring in the concept of compassion into everyday working at akshay patra what were some of those changes or processes that you were able to bring in where compassion became the order of the day for you you know uh, one of the important things for being compassionate is empathy mm-hmm. and uh, when i'm talking of compassion uh, i'll just give you a practical example we i had a team member i had just started in akshay patra i had it and we were building the team So I had a team member. Uh, she was getting X lakhs rupees per annum, and the first year mm-hmm. she did just uh, one tenth of what she was drawing. And I got a lot of advice uh, from my colleagues. Hey, why are you keeping her? Mm-hmm. Uh, she should not be around here. Right. Because we are paying more mm. than what she is uh, bringing in. So I said, you see, every person goes through different situations. Mm-hmm. Um. we are not a cutthroat organization we are, we want to give people time uh, and time and compassion are linked to each other one needs to understand the other person so i said let us give her one more year mm-hmm. and when she left her organization she was the highest fundraiser the biggest in akshay patra mm-hmm. uh, several times of what her team was drawing you know now i could have taken a call to send her away and that's where compassion came in do you also realize that uh, 
uh, you also administered something called a safety under your leadership. So you brought in psychological safety for everyone where they did not worry if they had to fail by what you just said. You, you know, I'm thinking you gave them the freedom. What, what you said is so true. Um, you know, what happens is, you know, if you're a creative person, mm. you're a person with talent. Mm. Now I put a gun on your head mm. and ask you to paint mm. or ask you to sing. You won't be at your best. Not at all. You need to give so me space. So as a leader, as a CEO, what I realize is extremely important to create a sense of safety, mm -hmm. a sense of feeling that you know, I am wanted in this organization. Mm -hmm. And this should be across, not for somebody who is very powerful or who is performing very well. Mm -hmm. It should be right from the person who is receiving you in the uh, doorstep of your organization mm -hmm. to probably a CXO. Absolutely. You cannot have different folks, different strokes here when it comes to compassion. And, and you know, when you created the freedom for people to fail and for people to turn around and come back, I'm sure as the head of the organization, it wouldn't have been easy for you because there is a fine balance between the charity and survival, correct? The goal is to be charitable. The goal is to eradicate hunger. But at the same time, people have to be paid salaries, vendors have to be paid their, you know, bills on time. So there is that fine line that you have to draw as a leader in a very administrative capacity. So while doing so, right, what are some of the intelligent risks that you took? And while taking those risks, how often did you experience um, self-doubt? Or just the fears like, am I doing something which could destroy everything? Am I doing the right thing? Who would you talk to then? So let me tell you something interesting that uh, we ha I have experimented in Akshay and it mm -hmm. works very well. Mm -hmm. I think it'll work in many organizations. One is you need to trust your team. Okay. You need to trust your employee. Mm -hmm. You need to trust your vendors, trust your partners. Now, trust is at the core. It's not verify and trust. It is trust and then verify. So by default, we trust. Yeah. So you trust, mm -hmm. right? And once you, so there is no 90% trust uh, or 99% trust. It's 100% trust. Mm -hmm. You trust. And when you give, when you trust and when you give freedom, mm -hmm. that sense of security and freedom, or with this guy when I deal, uh, he will be fair, he'll be equitable, or she'll be fair, she'll be equitable, then people perform. So in Akshay Patra, I don't micromanage. Mm -hmm. If, if my colleague is there, I trust that person. I have never asked, I'm working for the last 33 years. Mm -hmm. I have never asked my colleague, uh, where were you yesterday? Mm -hmm. Or why have you come two hours late? So that trust is extremely important and freedom is important. And mm -hmm. above all, it's very important to share what is a value system. Mm -hmm. So in Akshay Patra, we have six values. Yes, I've seen that uh, it's yes. put up all over. Correct. So, integrity, compassion, mm -hmm. devotion, synergy, quality, and trustworthiness. Mm. Of course, some people do sometimes misuse it. Mm -hmm. Misuse or uh, there may be a breach of trust. So, my uh, approach or philosophy, Janavi, has been give a lot of freedom, mm -hmm. trust your team, but if breach of trust is there, improper IT, or, uh, you know, uh, doing something which is uh, pecuniary in nature mm -hmm. for self-benefit, putting the organization down, then it is zero tolerance. And and have you taken those kind of uh, decisions? At lots, time? lots, lots of calls. Mm -hmm. And my team knows mm -hmm. that uh, this guy, when it comes to breach of trust, it is, is no nonsense. I, I know, the integrity can either be completely there exactly. or not there exactly. and uh, I don't think as a leader you yeah. can afford to compromise that and yeah. I don't think any leader can so you so you, you asked me whom do I uh, talk who look up to speak mm. to so uh, my spiritual master from Srila Prabhupada mm. has written a lot of literature and books mm -hmm. so he's an inspiration for me mm -hmm. when it comes to value system right right and uh, we have something called uh, called as a handbook of values in Akshay Patra uh -huh. or the code of conduct. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's something like a Bible within the organization and which we refer to if there is an issue. And if there is an issue, even before you talk to Srila Prabhupada, but to your own self, okay, deep within your mind, what are 
those little indicators that tell you that should you go ahead, should you not go ahead, is this the right thing, is this not the right thing. So share with, share with all the people who would probably listen, how does Sridhar's mind work and the little dilemma sorting, what happens there? So, you know, uh, these are very complex decisions, especially let go of a person mm -hmm. uh, uh, on, on an integrity issue. So data is something you should resort to. Mm. Okay. So black and white data. Data is very, very important mm -hmm. uh, that you should resort to. And if it is gray, mm -hmm. then uh, you should let go of, the, then the, you, you can't take the tough call. That means uh, if you're not sure. So then in that case, you need to take uh, the benefit of doubt, mm -hmm. uh, saying that uh, you, know, you can let go of thousand thieves, but one innocent person should not be uh, charged wrongly. So you repose the trust in the person and Absolute. give the person the benefit Absolutely. of doubt. Absolutely. So Sometimes. data, if data is black and white, mm -hmm. uh, then we take the call. And let me also share with you, even people whom I have sacked, mm -hmm. Uh, the way you sack also matters a lot. Okay. You need to respect them. Mm -hmm. Maybe that situation they have taken that call and we have decided to uh, part, part ways. ways. Even now they are in touch with me. Mm -hmm. So the way you uh, come across and explain to them in a respectful manner, mm -hmm. just because somebody has breached your trust, you can't be disrespectful. So respect is the core value in Akshay Padram. And, and Shridhar, to maintain respect, okay, this I'm going to ask you on behalf of a lot of leaders because I think this is a very important takeaway. To be respectful of others, it's very important to be unbiased to a large extent. And it's not possible when the data is telling you otherwise. We're human after all. So we are bound to contaminate it with a little bit of our own biases or emotions about a person or a situation. How do you try and eliminate those biases so that you truly feel respectful to about the person and at the same time you remain understanding of the perspective see one of the most important thing is i feel every soul is potentially divine mm -hmm. it is the circumstances mm -hmm. the choices which people make uh, that make a person good or bad okay but at a soul level everyone is uh, children of god child of god actually so that is very, very important for a leader to know that uh, maybe there is some circumstance or a situation which this person has to go through and he or she has taken this wrong call in life. Uh, so you hate the sin, not the sinner. Beautifully said, beautifully. And I'll, and I'll share an anecdote what uh, we have. So a lot of times when I'm working with our clients who want the organizations to be diagnosed, um, you know, across levels of engagement or motivation. Now, one of the things I kind of gently remind the leaders is that let's believe that everyone who wakes up and turns up to work comes here because they want to do so and comes here because they seek a professional identity and a personal fulfillment. Now, in case the levels of engagement are not up to the mark or expectation or the performances are not up to the expectations, there possibly could be other reasons. It cannot be that they turn up because they don't want to work. Yeah. So like, if we believe in that, then we're able to correct, you know, we're able to correct certain systems or processes, not the person. But if we go on to believe that the person himself is a fraud or, a, you know, um, a, you know, someone who is propagating dystopia, in the organization, then automatically our biases against the person will become so strong that we're never going to see this person has any capability. Absolutely. Then you see the world with a colored glass. Absolutely. And another thing, Janavi, is in such matters, leadership communication mm -hmm. plays a very important role. Uh, how are you, What are you trying to communicate? And are you allowing two-way communication, a free communication between the leader and the people who work with you? So, so that, that's where I'm going to just come in for a second and ask you, how do you there distinguish between instruction and possibly, say, influencing or informing? So let me, uh, you know, much early in my life, I read one interesting data which mm -hmm. said that in communication, mm -hmm. the effectiveness of communication, 85% depends on how you communicate. Right. And 15% is what you are communicating. True. So I think if respect is there in the core of any communication, mm -hmm. uh, then the other person 
you connect. So, you know, uh, it is said that uh, many communicate and few connect. And connect is all about others. So when I'm when I'm talking to any colleague of mine or any person, uh, if I have to connect with that person, it's all about that person, not about me. So the more I talk about the other person, mm -hmm. about the family, situation, problems, how can I help? So for example, the many leaders I, I speak to them and ask them, hey, this is the issue, how can I support you? Mm -hmm. Right. We want maybe the person is at fault uh, in lead leadership. Mm -hmm. How can we strengthen? Mm -hmm. Now, other way to put it is, oh, you are doing this. Mm -hmm. This is what is happening. This is a problem. This is what the issue. Mm -hmm. So the way you communicate, right? Uh, if 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 you communicate with empathy, mm -hmm. because tomorrow you can be in that situation. Yes, yes. You should treat the world the way you want the world to treat you. Yeah, and it does come back to you. It resonates back to you if absolutely, you've invested in it. Absolutely, yeah, and, absolutely. And that's the truth. That, you absolutely. Know, you do good somewhere, somewhere around it comes back you to you. You know, us. as a young boy, uh, one lecture I had heard, mm -hmm. that happiness moves in circles. Oh, yes, completely. So if I make you happy, you make the other person happy. This person makes someone else happy. And it's you contagious. Come, yeah, you come in a circle of happiness. Totally. And uh, that is, you know, happiness is something each one of us is looking for, whether you're a leader, mm -hmm whether you're a beast, mm -hmm. whether uh, you are a demigod, mm -hmm. any person is looking for happiness. Perfect. So what blows your fuse or rattles your cage at work? So if consistently somebody shows poor attitude. Such as? Uh, such as, let's say, abusive behavior. Mm -hmm. uh, being disrespectful. Mm -hmm. Uh, being disrespectful or being condescending to a person who's weak. Mm -hmm. So there I get upset, but I don't shout. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a way of assertively putting it across because even while communicating, I want to ensure that maybe he had a situation at home or he, he, he or she has a problem. That's why they're communicating like that. So this is something, being disrespectful, being dishonest or being... Um, condescending, poor attitude consistently mm -hmm. is something uh, I feel then it doesn't work for me. Then we find ways to, uh, I, then I communicate, hey, this is not going to work. And I have let go of people who have been very high performers mm -hmm. on this particular uh, uh, aspect actually. And you've had no regrets about it. You see, when you build an organization based on trust, based on respect, uh, you even if you let go of some people, the environment is such it will attract good performers. A good environment, a good ecosystem. So, for example, if you want to be a, an NBA basketball player or you want to play cricket for India at a national level, it's important to be surrounded by such people. Similarly, at Akshay Patra, the fact that you all feed 2.1 million children hot midday meals every single day without fail is mind-blowing and, um, you know, it's, it's completely something that is awe-inspiring for everybody, right? And I believe the number will increase from 2.1 to 2.5 and 3 million children because in one of the interviews I heard you saying it's just a fraction of the hunger of this country that we are fulfilling and meeting today, which means that we really have a lot more to do. What are some of the capabilities and attitudes at the Akshay Patra Foundation you think need to be inculcated further so that the Akshay Patra Foundation is able to meet the needs of more hungry children across the country. So, you know, you spoke about the statistics mm -hmm. of 2.1 million children. I would not like to take the credit. I have been blessed with a fantastic team, a great leadership. Great leadership in the sense I report to a monk. Mm -hmm. I, my two of my bosses are monks, monks. actually. Okay. So I learned from my chairman who's a monk. Mm -hmm. He said, Sridhar, your ability to take risks becomes infinite when you're selfless. Okay. Okay. How so, would that translate into, um, you know, what you said is, is, is very, very, um, it's taking me a couple of seconds to process it. Now, for common, normal, ordinary mortals who are also in leadership positions, help us translate that, you know, what you just so, said. So, you now. know, uh, you won't be giving your best in terms of risk taking mm -hmm. or uh, courage if you, if you have a bundle to hold on to yourself. Like uh, you are carrying a baggage mm. in the sense of what is in store for me. 
So if you have a personal agenda or a hook. Yes, if uh, you have a personal agenda, self-interest, okay, uh, than the larger world's interest or the humanity's interest, right? Then your ability to take risk comes down drastically. Mm. When I say when I'm saying risk, I think he's talking of how uh, you can forge ahead, uh, how you can be courageous and uh, go ahead and do things. So coming back to the point which you're asking about Akshay Patra in terms of mm -hmm. what are those capabilities uh, which further uh, we want to look at, I am working on two things, okay. only two in Akshay Patra. Mm -hmm. I believe in two and three. Okay. okay it's easy to remember. Mm -hmm. So two things which I'm working on maybe for the next 10 years. One is how do we further strengthen the culture of Akshay Patra? Mm -hmm. So in a crowd of maybe, so there are 300 million North for profits in this country. There Correct. is one Akshay Patra. Yes, yes. Okay. So my one of my uh, dreams is if in a set of maybe 100 North for profit people, someone like a Janavi can say, oh, this person looks like an Akshay Patra person hmm. by their behavior. Hmm. Hmm. So very distinct behaviors. Yes. Okay. So uh, and uh, based on culture. Hmm. And how do I define culture? How do we define culture? Our values in action. Values in action. Values in action is the definition of culture in Akshay Patra. This is how I have coined. Mm. Okay? So two things. One is how do we strengthen the culture in Akshay Patra mm -hmm. further? Mm -hmm. Second, how do we take initiatives, mm -hmm. uh, improve, innovate? So only these two things. So I, I learned uh, from one of my friends that if you continue to do what you're doing, mm -hmm. after some time you degenerate. Right. Right. So it's very important. You know, God has been very kind to us that we have been blessed with a strong brand. Mm -hmm. We have an installed capacity. Uh, today our installed capacity is 3 million children we can feed in one shift. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a success evidence model. Mm -hmm. We have demonstrated that we can deliver. What we need to do and keep doing is take initiatives to improve. Just to give you one example. If I save one paisa mm. on the cost of meal of Akshay Padra, right. one paisa, right? Paisa, okay. Yes. We can feed four thousand more children for one whole year without raising any additional fund. And this model of yours has already become a Harvard Business case study as well. So there are three case studies done by the Harvard Business School on Akshay Padra actually. Yeah. On on the. On, 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 on various areas, okay, on scaling up. Mm -hmm. and in fact, Stanford also has studied Akshay Patra. So Stanford found few mindsets mm -hmm. in Akshay Patra. Since you're a psychologist, yeah. Yeah. so Stanford found uh, a few mindsets like um, the denominator mindset, mm -hmm. frugality mindset, mm -hmm. lateral hiring mindset. Which is what is evident in everyday practice at Akshay Patra. Absolutely, yeah. because if you see my team, mm -hmm. uh, even the monks who work with us, mm -hmm. none of us come from food background. Yes. I heard that. All None of you come from corporate corporate banking. Corporate backgrounds. Yeah. You know, uh, someone Telecom. has come from financial background, uh, technology, sales, marketing. Mm. Uh, none of us came from food background. In fact, in fact, very few in my organization are from the development sector. Okay, so lateral hiring mm -hmm. is something which Akshay Patra, I think over a period of time has uh, developed actually. Yeah. So we, we try to, what we try to do, Janavi, is can we give purpose to a person mm -hmm. who is joining Akshay Patra. Because I believe that purpose fuels passion to do anything. And and you as a leader, Sridhar, like you rightly said, there are thousands of not-for-profit organizations and why is it the Akshay Patra Foundation stands out so significantly? Um, because you have been a leader who's been able to instill systemic thinking, continuous improvement, process centricities in everything that you do which is not very common in the social impact sector, right? So you've been able to kind of corporatize that and bring in the right ways of working. What else do you think requires to be done? And I also know that you're the, you know, one of the great places to work. You've been awarded great places to work, so congratulations on that Thank as you. well. What do you think the Akshay Patra Foundation can do further so that you can attract talent which otherwise by default would go to a bank or a media company or to an IT organization, now will willfully choose to work in the social impact sector. So you know, you spoke about great place to work. Mm -hmm. uh, we are certified great place to work for seven times in a row. Our pride score is 92. Oh, wonderful. wonderful. And trust score is 89. 
Fantastic. Now, what else we need to do is, you know, we need to create more challenges, Mm -hmm. more problem solving kind of an environment for a youngster to come and solve those. And we have plenty of those in Akshay Mm Patram. So if leaders can come up and share three, four, five problems, which can be given to a top uh, you know, business school mm-hmm. grad or an IITN, because today's youngsters want to solve problems. They want to be in organizations which have purpose. Right. right. And Akshay Patra is an organization which has purpose. Absolutely. Because you are transforming lives of children. And you can see it happening day Absolutely. by day. Absolutely. You know, the other day, one six foot, three inches tall guy came to my office. Mm-hmm. Uh, parents come from a very menial background. Mm. First attempt, he has cleared Chartered Accountancy Examination. He is 10 wow. years beneficiary of Akshay Patram. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, he got a scholarship from us. Now this, the joy which I got, I could have never got in any organization. Unparalleled. And, uh, Unparalleled. Oh, and uh, you know, may, before COVID, five kids came to my office, uh, eighth graders. Mm-hmm. They were navigating a robot into my office. Fantastic. Children of laborers. And they got a big medal to show it to me. Mm-hmm. And these these are our beneficiary children. And the medal was they got first jury's prize in the National Robotics Competition, uh, beating some of the best private schools in the country. These are government school children. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. they got the meal from Akshay Patra. We connected them to an organization called Just Robotics. Mm-hmm. And this was the most signed up class. Mm-hmm. So if you can provide access to education, access to good food, our kids can do wonders. And and without even realizing, at a very, very grassroots level, we're building leadership. Absolutely. Okay? And, and we're building emergence of right kind of behaviors and right kind of citizens or good citizenship for future. Absolutely. You know? That's why I call Akshay Patra feeding the future. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's just not about eradicating hunger. It's about if I'm fed yeah. right, I have the right nutrition, absolutely. then I'm able to solve bigger problems in the world. And and as a psychologist, you'll know, you know, then you start thinking right, right? Right. Right. Yes. Your mind is thinking mind right. Mind is thinking right. In fact, I just met a youngster, 19 year old, two days ago. And she said, you know, I, last year I realized I wasn't transitioning well from home to the university because my food choices were bad. There was a lot of wrong food choices. I wasn't eating right. This year, I feel less depressed and I feel less isolated because I've started eating healthier. Absolutely, and, absolutely. You know, and, and just because you said that, I, I remember this young 19-year-old telling me, and you're absolutely right. So, you know, and I'm and I'm thinking a lot more youngsters will make this conscious choice, not because, you know, some of them feel altruistic about it, but they really want to be a part of a larger organization which, which has a very, very defined purpose. So when you're doing all of this, okay, uh, there would be times when a lot of adversities come your way. It's not simple. There could be adversities from political sectors. There could be adversities from, you know, government, financial, a lot of sectors, legal sectors. How do you process adversities as an individual? And then how do you as a leader demystify and decode them so your team is always set for action? So as an individual, uh, uh, Janavi, uh, I'm doing God's work. I'm a squirrel in uh, the army of God. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I'm a chosen squirrel. Mm-hmm. So I feel protection from God mm. in the face of adversity because I'm doing. Uh, I'm part of His mission. So you believe the adversity is also part of the absolutely, journey. absolutely. That adver- adversities actually make me learn, mm. right? This is part of the whole design. Mm. So, so that for me, that's the most important thing. Second is to my team. What I tell them is, you know, for a team, it's very important they know what is the larger picture. Mm -hmm. Let's take a finance person or a production person or a project management person. Why are they doing what they are doing? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, when we got the first time Great Place to Work certification, one interviewer asked me, at that time we we had 6,000 employees, today we have 9,000. So the interviewer asked me, if there's one question you would like to ask to all the 6,000 people, what is that? And what is that? So I said, I will ask my team, ask yourself, why are you doing what you're doing? And what was the answer? So, now this is an introspection they should do. Mm-hmm. So the point, the, in the when they are faced with adversity, I tell them, go and visit a school mm-hmm. where we are feeding. Mm-hmm. Go and talk to children. You know, no adversity is big enough for you to overcome if you have the grit, determination, courage, and of course, God's uh, grace. 
So I tell them, uh, go and talk to children for whom you're working mm -hmm. and you can face any adversity. Lovely. Lovely. So connecting to the larger picture, so I think can uh, create a different energy uh, in, in the mind-body system. Why are you doing what you're doing? I'm, I'm like for a person who's a non-believer, mm -hmm. I may say I'm serving God's children. Mm -hmm. Someone who's a non-believer, he's actually transforming lives of children. Right, right, right. Right? Both are important. Right, right. Okay. So uh, connecting to the larger picture, mm -hmm. having purpose. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have purpose in life, you can face any adversity. So on that you know what you just said about purpose. Um, a few days ago, I was speaking to another leader and he had a very interesting thing to say. You know, purpose is clearly gives us a pointed direction. But if that purpose is aligned with the vision, the vision gives a little more space to experiment, to explore, to innovate. And as an Eisenhower Fellow for Innovation, Sridhar, you are awarded the Eisenhower, you know, um, award, fellowship. Uh, fellowship for Innovation. And digital being the new green today, how are you imbibing, okay, sustainable practices under your leadership, not just within your 6,000 employees, but in the larger spectrum of people who support the Akshay Patra mission, be it vendors, be it partners, be it schools. What are some of the things you and your team are doing? So for example, when it comes to schools, we are encouraging children not to waste. Mm -hmm. Uh, have gratitude, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, these are very important. And we try to work with vendors mm -hmm. who are responsible vendors. Right. In fact, right. one of the guidance which I give to my team mm -hmm. is treat a vendor the way you'll treat a donor. Okay, and that means? Which means just because it's a vendor who's depending on you, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you cannot be irresponsible in behavior with them. Right. right, right? You want to be respectful to them. Right. So coming back to sustainable bit, at an Akshay Patra level, we are looking at three things generally. Mm -hmm. One, uh, we use, uh, let's take water. Mm -hmm. So can we reduce the non-cooking water consumption by 50% by 2030? Okay, and and how are you doing that? So we are, um, we are looking at optimizing the usage of water using mm -hmm. technology, re recycling water, mm -hmm. okay, avoiding wastage. And we are, we are at the baseline for it. We are measuring it because what gets measured gets done. Mm. What doesn't get measured doesn't get done. Mm. So we are measuring it. Second is we are looking at renewable energy mm -hmm. where we are saying 50% of a requirement by 2030 mm -hmm. should be from renewables. So mm -hmm. we have started piloting it. Currently okay. we are at 22%. Mm -hmm. So by 2030, we, if we can reach 50%. You know, in uh, recently we opened a kitchen in uh, Barsana, which is in Uttar Pradesh. Right. Mm -hmm. All women kitchen. Fantastic. Right Fantastic. from the security guard mm -hmm, mm -hmm. till the operations manager mm -hmm. is a lady. Okay. They are locally sourced. Mm -hmm. And you know we have innovated little things like the ladle, mm -hmm. which used to be four or five kgs, is now mm -hmm. one and a half kgs. Wow, it's become lighter and easier Lighter. And these women drive electric vehicles. Mm -hmm. Okay, and highly charged. So this is like, uh, if you, it is you know, proven by research mm -hmm. that if you start a meal program in a mm -hmm. location, the GDP of the location improves. Absolutely. So these women, they are getting livelihood, they are giving back to the society, and building sustainability in design itself mm -hmm. really helps. This is like the Dordo village, uh, Prime Minister Modi spoke yes. in Kutch, yes. you know, yes. building sustain, yes. which was the last village of India, Yeah. has now become the first village of India. Yes. Yeah? The sustainability yes. and the economy yeah. has grown yeah. so much. Yeah. So when you were and you know you're continuously visualizing and dreaming and implementing these changes towards becoming more sustainable i'm sure that adaptation inside the organization happens at various levels not everyone's uniform what are some of the setbacks or obstacles as a leader you face in the people's adaptation journey and what do you do you know you can't obviously enforce adaptation it has to be from within so what is it something that you do to influence them and to make them see the need for this emergence. So, you know, what happens is uh, a leader may have an idea or a, a, a thought or innovative mm -hmm. um, idea. Not everybody will accept it or embrace it. Mm -hmm. What works, in my view, is a pilot. Mm -hmm. Okay. If you're able to demonstrate. Mm -hmm. Now, let's take we have 69 kitchens in Akshay Patra. Mm -hmm. uh, they actually are the... Uh, 
centers or the nerve centers for hope for these children. Right. Now, if you want to innovate or create something new, mm -hmm. instead of trying to force fit to all the six nine uh, kitchens, can be implemented in one place. Okay. Demonstrate mm -hmm. uh, over a period of time. What are we talking about? So then, what happens is uh, you have created a proof of concept, and then you bring in uh, people to showcase to them what it is that you have done it here. So pilots works very well than trying to say, oh, I am the leader. Tomorrow onwards, all of you will be following this. So you're bringing in the classical project management philosophy into very this. Very important, very important. Yeah. And, and you know, you need to walk the talk. Yes, yes. People, you know, to some extent will buy your theory, mm -hmm. but what really works is demonstrating on ground. Right, right. So when you demonstrate on ground, it's important for an organization that is planning to be relevant for tomorrow. And I believe the Akshapatra Foundation is planning not just to be relevant for tomorrow, but to be continuously useful to society. It's important to create an ecosystem where curiosity can be challenged. And the bedrock for curiosity is the freedom to ask questions. As a leader, what practice do you have that allows people to freely ask questions? You know, if a leader can take steps by which you remove fear mm -hmm. in the organization. Uh, for example, if you have demonstrated time and again mm -hmm. that uh, you can ask any, for example, we have a town hall in Akshay Patra. Mm. Just to give an example, twice a year we do. Mm. Anyone can ask any question publicly. Mm -hmm. And there's no retaliation. No retaliation, no okay. victimization. In fact, if somebody tries to victimize, that person will be uh, put into the dock actually. Mm. Mm. So then what happens is the team feels that so these are the guys who really believe and practice mm. freedom of speech. They make us feel wanted. Mm -hmm. That's very important. So leadership behavior is extremely, extremely important. You can't be one at your home yes. and different in the office or different in a place like this. Yeah. One has to be consistent. Your value system has to be consistent whether it's midnight, morning, wherever you are. So the congruence is very critical. Absolutely. Consistency, uh, you know, take time to find your values, but once you have found them, stick mm -hmm. to it. No Just don't budge. No matter how budge. hard it is, right? Huh? Yeah, no matter how hard it how is. How hard it is. You have to stick to it. to it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and it's a nice thing that, you know, the town halls facilitate questioning because with questioning comes curiosity and with curiosity, automatically improvement practices come in. And, at and you know, I, another thing which I tell Janu, sorry mm -hmm. to interrupt you, uh, is I tell them, guys, do you know which is the most stupid question? So the answer to that is the most stupid question is the one which is not asked. Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah. and uh, if you tell, another thing which I tell youngsters when I interview them, don't develop a pressure cooker mentality. Mm. You know, yeah. you talk it out, but talk it out respectfully. There is a cost and a consequence to both. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. One has to be mindful of that. Absolutely, absolutely. So when I ask a question, am I asking it out of curiosity uh, because I want to learn? Or am I asking it out of an audacity that I want to show off I know yeah. better than you? Yeah. That can be very easily made, made out. Made out, yeah. yeah. I think you can't fake out. that too much. Yeah. So I think longer. the culture uh, which the leader works on, mm -hmm. I think the biggest contribution a leader can give to an organization is to provide a strong culture. Totally, totally. The rest of the jobs get automatically yeah. done in the culture. You know, recently uh, we had one of the board members talking mm. a very nice point he mentioned. You know, he said, I can outsource a skill, mm. but I cannot outsource an attitude. Couldn't agree more with you than that. It's yeah. completely yes. So, absolutely. so that's so important. And you see, any employee, respect of the level, mm. is he or she is always observing the leader. So that consistency your behavior, you have to be day after day after day exhibiting values in action. Everyone's observing you and everyone's emulating you. Have you picked up anything, say, from, say, someone who's very new or very junior or very remote at the Akshay Patra Foundation, but you found something, okay? Have you picked up something that today is a part of your repository? You know, I had a colleague, um, he, uh, he recently left us. Mm -hmm. One thing I picked up from him, you know, generally we say good morning. Mm -hmm. He used to come and say happy morning. Ah, okay, okay. I love that. Mm -hmm. You know, again, the way you put it across makes a lot of difference. Mm -hmm. So he will go around telling everyone happy morning. So this is something I learned from him. 
and and you do that today oh many times i do that oh not wonderful yeah. and you yeah. automatically see everyone lighting up and absolutely lot absolutely. more cheer in absolutely. the organization because people are looking for happiness absolutely what makes you laugh shrida um you know i can laugh on, at anything okay. okay and i'm a simple person mm-hmm. so anything which is fun mm-hmm. i laugh and uh, sometimes even at ad- adversity i laugh mm-hmm. okay a uh, laughter i learned from my mother mm-hmm. okay she uh, she recently passed away she was 90 laughter is something which i imbibe from her mm. so i think there's there in the gene that's there in the gene and my team was very particular that you know they said uh, they keen to know this one thing about you what gives you goosebumps and keeps you up at night shridhar what gives me goosebumps and you know when i see a child from a very humble poor background mm mm-hmm. doing very well in life mm. uh coming and telling me or telling any of my colleague that uh, i have done this i'll just give one real example mm. you know we have this goodwill ambassador master chef sanjeev kapoor yeah. he was talking uh in the united states in a gala mm-hmm. 800 people in one room and he was talking about akshay patra he's a ambassador for akshay patra right. goodwill ambassador so in the united states packed room in a mm-hmm. big multinational conference hall one girl stood up and said i am a beneficiary of akshay patra that gives me goosebumps wow it's giving me goosebumps right now okay yeah. and i'll give you another one uh, i'll just tell you 30 in one mm-hmm. minute i'll tell you a real thing that happened and i remember the story this has happened much early in my akshay patra career you know we started with five schools 1500 children when we reached 1 million children mm-hmm. i was very curious to know the impact akshay patra makes mm-hmm. on a child scale number and all is fine So I got this uh, boy from the our first school. Mm-hmm. Uh, this boy had become a man, tall mm-hmm. guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, he came with an envelope in his hand. Mm-hmm. I asked him, "Can you tell me about yourself?" So he said, "I was son of a security guard mm-hmm. many years back, mm-hmm. and uh, my father used to earn about three thousand rupees mm-hmm. salary. Uh, Ten days he was a temporary security guard. Ten right. days in a month right. he will get mm-hmm. uh, salary." So I asked him. how was your academic performance in the school mm. so he said i used to faint in the class mm. uh, i used to barely pass 40% mm. marks mm. and what happened after akshay patra program came to your school mm. so he said my attention span went up i was able to f- study hard work hard play hard 40 became 60 the next year mm. 60 became 80 and in 10th i scored 92% marks and He remembered Akshay Patra gave him a five thousand rupee scholarship. Mm-hmm. With that, he studied eleventh and twelfth, and in twelfth he scored ninety seven percent marks in physics, chemistry, and maths. Went on to do B Tech in computer science, and that envelope which he had got was an offer letter, about twenty to thirty times more salary than his father. Wow, wow! And he showed the offer letter to me from wow. India's leading multinational firm. How did you feel? Who's mom? I had tears in my eyes, oh my and this is a story I would have narrated hundreds of times. Mm. And you know, like the those kids who came to my yeah. office na- navigating a robot. Now these kind of experiences are, you know, you you feel that you uh, this is truly really transformative experience, and that's what gives me happiness actually. You believe, and I believe that good food, good nutrition. makes people healthy which i mean emotionally physically mentally healthy is there any dedicated work or targeted work that the akshay patra foundation is doing towards also building mental health in children you see currently our uh, focus mm-hmm. is on giving a hot safe nutritious meal to a child mm-hmm. uh we are trying to do a small pilot called eat well mm-hmm. which is to improve the meal experience in that we have tried to uh, uh, talk of gratitude to people who serve you food mm. uh, the teachers okay uh, not to waste food because these are important values for the child okay. but uh, at a mental health level we are not doing anything uh, but these are small small pilots we are doing maybe we'll scale it up at the later date sure but you asked one to, question yeah. to me about um, we will remain relevant yes, right yes i won't tell you something contrary tell me uh you know many years back i was speaking at the ias training academy mm-hmm. and one young ias training officer freshly minted mm-hmm. 110 of them were there okay. a bright mind right mm-hmm. 
So one young boy stood up and asked me this question: What do you want to do by twenty forty? Mm, mm. So I told him, "Our future is very bleak. Mm. Uh, we want to be irrelevant by twenty forty, and we. I wish Akshay Patra closes down by twenty forty." Wow, Shridhar, this is this is a very bold statement, and it's it's amazing. It's, it's because I don't want Akshay Patra to be a self-serving NGO. Mm. We and have to don't... try to solve a problem or create a model which can be replicated, which we have demonstrated over the years. So maybe after that we'll pick up something else and work on it. Uh, but this thing, I, as Akshay Patra feeding children, in my view, that's my personal wish and prayer to God that there should not be a need for Akshay Patra by 2040. At least not in the eradicating hunger. We hope that the hunger is eradicated and children all have absolutely, access to good absolutely, meals. Absolutely, absolutely. And the foundation can do another. Some you pick up another problem. Another problem and address another problem. Absolutely, in the absolutely, absolutely, right. absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Right. So uh, my last question to you, Shridhar, and why I say last is because um, obviously we can go on and you know there's so much to know about you. But uh, if you were to just for a second visualize yourself, it's a calm Sunday afternoon. You've got a nice, um, you know, possibly a nice freshly squeezed lemon juice or an orange juice in your hand because I, I believe you don't drink tea and coffee. So we'll we'll visualize it with a nice fresh juice in your hand, and you're just you know gazing into the horizon, into the distant horizon. There's nothing else. And when you're doing that, okay, you're by sitting on your porch in your veranda gazing into the distant horizon you've got this freshly squeezed fruit juice in your hand so now and you're imagining somebody presenting you introducing you to a large 800,000 member audience in a fabulous hall okay what are some of the words that you want them to introduce you by he was a sincere servant of god oh he's a sincere servant of god and um he has lived his life with values mm -hmm. okay and has not compromised on them and, and he has tried to spread happiness around he has tried to spread happiness around mm -hmm. in fact if you ask me uh my one of my dream is what can i do to spread eternal happiness happiness is fleeting right but there are uh, sutras mm -hmm. or there are ways to spread eternal happiness and that's something uh, i would want to pick it up i'm working on it mm -hmm. so uh, that's the way i would like to get introduced to someone who is uh, spreading happiness who has lived his life based on values okay who's a spiritualist mm -hmm. and a servant of god fantastic Fantastic, a servant of God and someone who can spread happiness yeah. unconditionally, I believe. And try to spread eternal happiness. Fantastic, fantastic. Yeah. So, you know, any time, anything at all, me and my organization can do to support you in your purpose and in this wonderful mission that you've been working on, we're always here for you. Right. Thank you. Thank you, Janavi. Such a pleasure talking to you. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm just going to say very clearly, you know, Sridhar, if time had no bar, this conversation can go on. But I believe there are a lot of people and, you know, who need your time, who need your attention at this point in time. So I won't say that this is the end of our conversation. I'll just say, Sridhar, for you, me and for all of us here that this is there's just ellipses now. Let's use the ellipses now and let's wait for another opportunity where we're fortunate enough to converse and we're fortunate enough to work together again because I believe in energies and I believe that this space creates those positive energies for a greater good. And if we are destined to enjoy good health, we have no excuses not to help and support others who need us at this point in time without any expectations. And I'm with you on this journey, Shridha. Thank you. Thank you so much, Janavi. Once again, congratulations on the 23 years of selfless service and devotion as you pursue to fulfill one of humanity's biggest visions. Thank you, Shridha, for being the man you are and for inspiring all of us here to follow your pathway. As you pursue further with many, many more miles to go before you sleep, your contribution to mitigating hunger in children is certainly remarkable and humbling. 
India needs more and more people like you and I sincerely hope that many professionals after listening to this conversation sign up to support to the Akshay Patra Foundation unconditionally. The Akshay Patra Foundation led by Shri Dev Venkat is a non-profit organization that strives to eliminate hunger in young children and students by providing nutritious midday meals through the implementation successfully and over 2.1 million children are fed every single day without fail so if you have the heart in you to support shrida in his vision further at the akshay patra foundation please volunteer and sign up with them at www.akshaypatra.org thank you once again shrida so much for being on clarity today and i certainly look forward to supporting you in all your initiatives going forward A big thank you to Vivek Satyamurthy for being the catalyst and connecting us together because without Vivek we wouldn't have met and really thank you so much Vivek for your earnest faith and your conviction that we could use this space to understand Akshay Patra and to understand the mind of Shridhar Venkat even better. I'm humbled and grateful to both of you for giving us this opportunity. My very best wishes to you Shridhar. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot. Well listeners I acknowledge that adapting to new patterns can be both complex and tough but not impossible. Many of these emotions play out their own charade making us feel low and lousy without actually knowing why. Through Clarity, a podcast series designed to create a safe space for conversations and reflections, I feel comfortable exposing my vulnerabilities with you and hope you find a connection, a meaning and a way ahead just in case you experience something similar. If this episode of Clarity and the conversation with my esteemed guest Shridhar Venkat strikes a chord with you, share your story with us on our LinkedIn and Instagram page, Vital Science Consults, or on Twitter at Janvi_Gurja8, and look us up at www.vitalscienceconsults.com. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to Clarity on our socials. Until next time, then this is Janvi Gurja signing off. Take care of yourselves. because you are precious.